So for our custom hooks, this is what we're going to do. Inside my hooks folder, I'm going to create a new file that is called use fetch. Now I'm calling it use fetch because I want to give an example of fetching data from an API using a custom hook. So I'm calling it use fetch because that is the convention for naming hooks. And then inside here, I'm just going to say RFC like so and save that. And this can remain to be small in small letters, even though we know that components in React need to begin with a capital letter. But because this is a custom hook and it, it is prefixed using use, then React is clever enough to detect that this is a custom hook. Now, the syntax is just going to be a bit different because this is a hook. So we can't simply just go ahead and render out like use fetch inside here, right? Because the structure is going to be as follows. First of all, the use fetch is going to be taking in a custom URL. So we want to be passing in a URL to the use fetch hook, which is going to be fetching the data from that particular URL or from that particular API. So if I go ahead and say this, use state and use effect, because we know that we're going to be fetching data from an API. So I can say this, I can say const data and set data is equal to, and by default, I want to pass in an empty array. And then by using the same link that we had, this link right here, so let me just copy it. I can do the following, and you know what? We need this entire asynchronous function, but you know what? Let me just type it out again, there's no problem. So let me say use effect inside here. Oops. Pass in my callback function and an empty dependency array so that it only runs on the initial render. So I'm going to say async function get data is equal to what am I doing? This is not an arrow function. And then I'm going to say const res is equal to await fetch and we're fetching from that link. And then const data is equal to await, you know what? This is going to conflict with this. So let me let me call this cards and then set cards. Set cards. So cost that is equal to await res.json. And then I'm going to say set cards into the data that we get back from the API. And then of course we just need to call the function that is called get data. And you know what? I'm even doing this wrongly. See how we passed in the URL inside here? So we don't need to hard code the URL because we want it to be dynamic depending on the URL that the user passes in. So we're going to pass in the URL inside here. So get data, get data. And then what we need to do is not return a div. We need to return the cards that we have on the top. So basically return the state value so that you can perform uh, functions or methods such as map method on it so that you can display it to the user. Now, when I go ahead and save that, let's jump inside our effect. And you know what, which one is a little bit less bloated? This one. So inside the state.js, let me just comment these two out and then comment out this div. And then let's do this. We are going to import our, our hook. So I'm going to say const data is equal to use fetch. And then inside the use fetch now, I'm going to pass in my URL. Because remember that the use fetch takes in a parameter, which is the URL. And then we are fetching the data from the URL that it receives. So in this case, we are going to do say use fetch. And then we're going to say this. So const data is equal to da da da. We're getting that. And then we're returning the data. So that now I can go ahead and render out a div. And inside this div, I can say data.map. And then for every country, so in this case, I know that we get back a country because this is fetching data about countries. And then I can go ahead and render out an article just like we did article, just like we did in the other example. So country.name.common. And then inside here, let's render out an h2 that says country.name.common. And what we should see on the screen is if I go back into my app.js, disable the effect and then enable the state here, then what we should see on the screen is the same countries. Look at that. And what we've done is we have simply just abstracted the functionality into a custom hook. I mean, that's, it's so nice, right? So nice. Now, I'm going to challenge you with this. Try to extract this timer into a custom hook. You can call it something like use timer and then try to play around with it and get it to display on the screen. That is going to be your assignment. So in the next video, we're going to begin to talk about the use ref hook.